Backyard Conversations Podcast. I don't have friends. I got family. Hey, man. Welcome to another episode with Backyard Conversations. We're here with your boy, Kevin. We're here with Jerry. We're here with JG. Hey. And uh, we're happy to be here with you guys. We are. Yeah, 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 yeah. Are we starting, starting? Yeah, you just okay. killed the vibe. Ah, they can <laughs> see it. <laughs> they can see it. It's okay. Another uh, episode here. What are, what are we uh, What are we talking about? Kevin, you got to play it again. We're talking about family. <laughs> put Toretto, holiday. Put Toretto summer here. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I'll do that. I'll do that. Well, we talking about family because uh, you know it's the holiday season. At least uh, here it's getting cold. Um, depending on where you are in the world, it might be a little hot. But, but yeah, we in Maryland. So it's getting cold. It's getting chilly. The autumn yeah. leaves are coming in, and uh, Thanksgiving is actually this coming week. Um, and then we got Grima, Grima, you know, or Thanksgiving and PR they just Sangivi. They celebrate it for like a whole week. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, Christmas. Whole time. It's like, Tres what are we Reyes. celebrating again? Huh? Whole time. Uh, yeah, whole they don't even know. Yeah, yeah. It's like, what the heck? Yeah. But uh, with, with holidays comes family. A lot of family reunions. Oh, yeah. Yo, I saw this show called The Bear. It's a, cooking, bear? it's a cooking oh, drama I thought it was show. a cartoon. No, 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 no. <laughs> you know yeah. like, the Cartoon Network? The like, what, what are you watching? What? No. <laughs> no, I saw the show The Bear, and it was there was a flashback scene where they were all together as a family for the, for Christmas. And, yo, that was the craziest scene I've ever seen. I'm not going to lie. So could you say People family going brings cuckoo. drama? Yes, unfortunately. Really? You're going to be like at y'all, the family. Y'all tell me, man. Y'all tell you me. You're going to be at the family gathering and be like, hmm. Getting a couple pounds, huh? Yo, for real. <laughs> yeah. Always somebody always got a comment on. Or if you're a teen, weight. they're like, y la novia, y el novio, and then you're sitting there like, what? No. They. Right? I, I had an uncle who used to tell, say that to me a lot, but he used to be like, I saw you in Greenbelt Mall con la novia, va. And I'm like 15. And I'm like, bro, I can't even leave the house. <laughs> like, I was like, bro, whole time I was like, can't stop playing with the Wii. Right. Right. <laughs> Yeah, right. The Wii or the Switch or the Switch. That time in your time, the Wii U. Oh, the Wii U. Oh yeah, no, I never had a Wii U. I broke my Wii and that was it. That was that was the end of it for me. Did you really though? Yeah. You were the one that broke it though. I don't know who broke it. It just stopped working. Somebody broke exactly. We'll find out. Okay. (laughs) I did break my DS. I tried to clean it with water. (laughs) Oh my god! I cleaned the cassettes. I would put some water in there and eventually just stop working. Oh my god. Yeah. So family does bring good memories. It brings good times. Yeah. But it can bring frustration. It can bring um it, it can it can bring drama. A lot of drama. Oh yeah. We all um, have family members that can be a little dramatic. Yeah. They uh, just like the I don't know, they just like the drama sometimes. I mean I uh unfortunately and I mean, I don't say this lightly. I wouldn't like say this lightly. Any like it, it was a hard decision for me to take in my wedding when I got married. Not all my family went. What? But because I didn't invite them. Zane. Not even your parents. My my parents oh, went well, and a couple cousins. Family. Yeah, but I mean, I have a lot of family here. Uh, but I also had a limited amount of of guests. That I had to yeah, uh, yeah, I feel accommodate. You. Yeah. So I, you know, I did the people that were like really close to me. Um, then you were at my wedding. Mm-hmm. So it was not a huge wedding. It was nice though. But it, it was nice. Good amount. Um, it was a good amount of people. But then I, uh, what got me is that um, I had asked a sibling like if they were going to come or something. And then they started talking about don't sit me next to this person. Or, don't, and I was like, bro, you know what? <laughs> I don't want to deal with this. I'm like it's my. I'm already like I was at a point where I was already stressing out because it's a wedding. I don't oh, know if yeah. you ever plan a wedding. It's the most stressful oh thing gosh. that I guess you're gonna go through <laughs> for the it's first. Very, it's very stressful. 
I think I it's a it, it's a test for the actual marriage to come. It's nothing compared to marriage, but it was really stressful. I look like, forward to that. <laughs> Uh, it, it, you it see was, that now? <laughs> yeah, it was extremely stressful. Yeah, no, it was. Um, and for me, that I tr- I was trying to keep a budget as well, but then as trying to have a nice wedding as well was was really stressful. Mm-hmm. But um, family, right? Sometimes it's easy to love them. Sometimes it's hard to love them. Sometimes, sometimes. Say no. <laughs> and um, sometimes um, they're the people that most hurt us. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. A lot of times, that's where the deepest grudges are. Mm-hmm. They are between family. Yeah, I don't. I mean, I don't know. Do you have a lot of family here? Not that I know of. From the U.S. here? No, like in in the state, like. Immediately. Oh, in Maryland. Yeah. No, no, I don't no. have any. Yeah. No. No, yeah, I do. I, most of my family is here. I think in the motherland, I only have an aunt. Two cousins and a retired uncle. And I said, everybody else is here. Yeah. Actually, for me, it was uh, kind of unique because I didn't grow up with a lot of extended family. It was just my immediate family, me and my parents and my brother. Um, and a lot of other people I knew are Hispanics, especially. They always had, oh, my cousin, this is person, yeah. you know. I, I, didn't have no, I didn't really grow up with that because all of my, a lot, most of my family still lives in, in PR. Um, I have a few members that live in florida and i think north carolina but that's it like mm. two two family members i don't know three maybe my apologies. cabin 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 what is that bad it's a, time uh it's an alarm clock <laughs> you said i gotta go to sleep guys family <coughs> toretto just watched uh the last what is it the last fast yeah or the last fast, fast and x fast 11 what fast, is fast. It now? Uh, yeah who knows still well family at this point i i i don't even take those movies serious no i, I watched the last one that joint was ridiculous <laughs> anyway family. family family so uh i want to start out with a verse something that we can um exercise is um first corinthians 13 love is patient kind love is not jealous or boastful or proud or rude it does not demand its own way it is not irritable it keeps no records of being wrong it doesn't not rejoice about injustice but rejoice whatever the truth wins out love never gives up never loses faith it's always hopeful and endures through every circumstance Nope. I believe that this is tied up to family uh, because sometimes we will have to love in special circumstances. When we become close to people, and especially our family members, we start to notice the flaws in them pretty quick. Even in our parents, I think at a young age, we are exposed yeah. to you know their p- private way of being i guess because here's the interesting thing that a preacher mentioned once um i don't i don't remember his name but it was very interesting to me that we tend to f- treat people outside of our family better than our family so he's saying you treat your coworkers better than you treat your mom mm-hmm. you you treat your coworkers be- <laughs> better than you treat your sister you treat your your boss better than you treat you know your dad so we tend to be comfortable with the people that we're close to mm-hmm. and we kind of have like this at least in my case i saw that that there was this thing where like even my mom as gr- growing up and i think that's something that is bothering my little sister with my daughters now and i can see that and i know what she's feeling because i remember that when my cousins came to my house my mom would treat them so good <laughs> that i would be like bro i'm your son and you don't even treat me that way yeah and then the, the, when they leave like oh you should act more like your cousin <laughs> <laughs> And, and and now that I have a daughter and we go over my parents and I have a little sister, she's about nine years old. So she's really young. Uh, every time that my mom gives too much attention to my daughter, my sister kind of shuts down and she starts 
kind of like throwing an attitude towards everybody actually and to my daughter and at first it ticked me off because it's like bro you're not about to treat my daughter and you're my sister the way you're treating her because she was really rude she's really Mm -hmm. like really rude when i tell you she's really rude she's like she's really rude um but then i started paying attention to exactly what was triggering her and it was that and then then it clicked in my mind i was like yo i used to feel the same way like to a point where i would be like my cousin like yo leave like i don't want you in my house (laughs) so um we need to have that perspective, uh, I guess, during this time, especially we want to talk about this because we're in a season of Thanksgiving, of being thankful. Mm-hmm. And I think one of the things that we need to be thankful for is the people who are surrounding us in a daily basis and who support us. Whether we like it or not, I mean, we didn't choose them. They're a gift from God. And um, I think we need to learn how to acknowledge them and we need to learn how to be thankful. Um and be grateful for them. So it's interesting that the preacher mentioned that we tend to treat people that we don't know better than the people that we do know and we're close to. Why? Because the person that you don't know, you're trying to put a good image Mm -hmm. and you're trying to make the best image of yourself. But then when we come close to the people that, or get around with the people that we interact on a daily basis, we're comfortable to a certain point where we lower that expectations, where we need to, you know, even as a husband, now I can say this, we need to like have that expectation that we need to continue giving our best Mm -hmm. to the individual that is, Mm -hmm. you know, next to us or to the family that we're living in. Um, Like your dad or your mom or your sister for say, um, because they're not always going to be around. Yeah, that is true. Yeah. Like, there's so many people that wish they had their parents alive or in more time with their uh, deceased siblings and they can't get that time back. One time a preacher told me, he said, uh, Kevin, the day that you pass away from this life, the only thing you're going to take with you is the time you spent with your family. Just because time is something that is continuous and never stops. So when you uh, when you pass away and you you know you pass over to the eternity, uh, all those memories of your lifetime, they they're they're always going to remain. They're always going to be there, and the ones that are going to remember it are those that you spent it with, and whoever they decide to share that with. Uh, that's why this holiday season, I think, it's not really about. Uh, and I I say this because I realize that now. Uh, I I mentioned to you guys that we I didn't really celebrate no holidays ever because you know that was a sin when I was a kid. Uh, so I don't really I didn't really celebrate holidays. So I don't I don't know what it's like to have a big dinner. I don't know what it's like to uh share gifts among each other. I don't know what it's like to put a Christmas tree up. I don't know what it's like to put decorations or anything like that. But um, I now realize that none of that is what really matters. Not not the decorations, not the presents, none of that. It's just the fact of being able to see those that you love, being able to see those loved ones, being able to see that those family members that you really don't see and you get to talk to, you get to chat with. And uh, you you're just grateful to be able to see them once again. I think um, this holiday season, some people need a need to shift their focus a little bit and understand that you have such a huge gift. If you're able to sit around in a table with cousins, aunts, uncles your parents, your your grandparents. If you're able to do that this holiday, be grateful about that mm-hmm. because so many people don't have that. Mm-hmm. There's people that uh, literally don't have a home and they sit in the street during the holidays wishing that they could be surrounded with family and they can't. People that are in prison that wish to be surrounded by family and they can't. And, uh, and there's regular people out here that just simply, they just can't be there with their family. They're, they wish to have that gift. So, uh, it's it's something definitely to be grateful about. And I also remind you, there are people that aren't your blood and are still your family. Yeah, that's so true. Because there's people that are so close to you that understand who you are, that uh that really won't let you go in your hard moments, your hard situations, that have been there, that have seen you torn down, have seen you got you know, when you've gotten back up, and those people 
they feel like family towards you. So uh, spend time with those also that even if they're not your blood, but they're still your family. Yeah, mm-hmm. you, you have those core circle, I guess, that inner circle of people. I um, want to clear something just so that everybody's clear. Uh, when Kevin says he won't put up no Christmas tree, no lights, <laughs> he didn't, he didn't have open up any gift, it's not because he was a monk. But <laughs> yeah. but it's because um in, or Jehovah Witnesses or Jehovah Witnesses. <laughs> but it's because in in uh in Hispanic culture, specifically in Pentecostal churches back in the days, I don't know how how where we at right now with that since I, think, I don't go I think to a Pentecostal. I think church. it had a bit of a resurgence. Yeah. yeah. Recently. Uh huh. Yeah. So I mean, I I kind of similar to your situation. My parents didn't really celebrate Christmas. Um, didn't <laughs> Sorry, really celebrate Christmas. Alarm off, Kevin. Please. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and my my parents, um, uh, they never put up a tree or anything. And I, I think I was telling you guys that as a joke, this one year I bought one of those orders that have a pine tree. Uh huh. And I put it on the living room, like the I car, the yeah. car things, right? Yeah. And I hung it, and I put presents and i went and bought presents and that was our christmas tree so um it was it was kind of funny and it was kind of like a uh i don't know i got away with it mom kind of thing <laughs> like i put up a christmas tree but it was more of a religious aspect that uh a lot of people believe that like uh, celebrating christmas is something that is evil or satanic mm-hmm. um and to be honest it you know Right now, I think that celebrating Christmas or um, even Thanksgiving to a certain point, I feel like there's a lot of people that don't do it for the right reasons. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no. A lot of people do it for uh, Santa Claus and gifts and they take the Christ out of it, you know. Or or in Thanksgiving, they do it to show off. Yeah. yeah. Like, oh, this is a... That's true. This is a time where I can show off my yeah such and such or oh, like I, my I aunt. have it all together. Yeah, Look at all exactly. this food. Look at this house. Yeah, yeah or yeah, just, like <laughs> let me play it off and, and pretend that everything's okay. Yeah. But deep down, your house is a mess and, you know, your emotional stability is a mess. Um, So to a certain point, I feel like, yes, now a lot of people are bringing that family, you know, integration in the church where you know you need to spend time and be thankful but then there's the other secular i guess uh side of it where it it's you know it gets taken out of proportion especially christmas Mm -hmm. there's so many people that don't enjoy christmas because of the gifts and all the stress that they go through or there's people that don't even take advantage of thanksgiving but want to take advantage of the deals of Black Friday. Zing. Yeah, that's true. When m- most of the time you're spending money that you don't have. <laughs> yeah. Um. Let's just let that sit real quick. <laughs> <laughs> so, so it's like, man, we have a lot of things to be grateful. Even mm-hmm. the air that we breathe, we should be grateful. The fact that I don't think people truly understand how privileged they are. No matter if you live in a in, in a one bathroom apartment, no matter if you live in a basement, because I lived in a basement in, 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 you know, in part of my life, renting a basement as a family, a whole family. Matter of fact, it was a whole family. It was like five people in a basement. Uh, and I, you know, I'm still grateful for that and for those experiences, but people don't understand how good we have it here. They don't. Yeah. We, we live better than Kings. Even if you're yeah. like in the lower, in the lower, you know, lower class class, uh-huh. you live better than Kings back in the days. Yeah. We have a lot more convenience. But you have clean water. You got AC. Yeah, you have AC. <laughs> you have water. You know, you you can you, you have a microwave. You have a, a stove. So it's like, man, we really should be considerate of where we at and learn how to be thankful in where we at and what we have. Nonetheless, you shouldn't be satisfied. You should always strive to continue moving forward. 
But I feel like this holiday season, sometimes it does get distorted and we lose sight of showing gratitude to the people around us, which are, which is our family and, you know, to showing gratitude towards God. But yeah, I mean, yeah, family, because we, we should take these uh, holidays and take advantage to do good things with them, you know, appreciate what we do have, appreciate the people we have in our lives, you know, Christmas, take the time to, you know, just give thanks for, if you're a Christian, you know, for God and just spend some time with your family because um, family is impactful. It's important, right? Uh, the importance of a strong family, uh, whether immediate or it's more like friends. I mean, what's that verse? There's that verse that says like a friend is for hard or it's like for to lift you up and a brother is made for hard times, something like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, like there, there's Proverbs, there's an important, maybe? probably something like that. I forget. I, I read it not too long ago and I forgot. But, you know, there's a significance and an importance to having community and family. Um but at the same time, unfortunately, we're subject to a lot of bad families or at least members or bad situations. Um, you know, I mean, to a certain like extent, it, we it all have flaws. You. Yeah, we do. Um, and no family is going to be perfect. Um, you know, no family is going to be the perfect family that doesn't make mistakes is always going to be there for you. It's sort of a mutual thing where you're not perfect, but they're not perfect either. You know, mm -hmm. you just got to be there for each other. Forgive. That's one thing. A lot of family members, I know we all have some family member that just does not want to let go of something. Forgive. Yeah. You know, they don't want to forget. <laughs> you got that one, aunt, that one uncle. I don't know. They have some grudge. Yeah. You know, um, like I said, me, I, I don't have like, I didn't spend too much time with my extended family, but for the most part, I have a good relationship, but I know like my wife, I don't know. I've heard a lot of a lot of grudges on her side, or I have friends that they're they're you know, they're not too good with their families or or whatnot. What do um, you say to those people in terms of like the lack of love? I like, think I can understand because a lot of times what happens is that you know their families do some things that are just if you're not Christian they're unforgivable. You know they're, they're, they just do some wild things. Or they really just treat you dirty, you know, or they do something that's like, man, that was really not okay. Um, so there's reason and there's understanding. I can understand, but um, there's freedom and forgiveness and um, to hold on and to just keep that grudge. Um, it holds you back, you know, it will. Um, and the blood of Christ has set us free. Um, they're like, there's seriously power and forgiveness. Um, now that doesn't mean you have to be all buddy buddy with them you know you don't have to just like act like nothing ever happened but um to let that go will do wonders for you probably in your life i mean i i don't think i've ever seen a bad case of forgiveness i don't think i've ever heard of some forgiving somebody and then turning out bad um so it's important to forgive and to let christ take the burden you know take your pain because you know family members they, they do cause pain sometimes because that's the thing they're the closest people to us so when right. they do something bad, when they hurt you, they hurt you. You know, you hurt. Right. Yeah. Um, so it's tough. Um, but at the same time, you know, I think that's why we have to be the most gracious with them, you know? Yeah, we have to show mercy. Um, because we could do the same thing. And I'm sure yeah. that we've all done things to certain family members. You know, I have a younger brother. I've done some things to my brother. Maybe I've uh, done certain things with my parents that I regret, you know? I'm like, man, like I don't have regrets, but the one thing... that Man, the every the only things I ever forget in my life is when I disrespected my mother, man. Every time I think about it, I'm, I'm like, oh, I feel so like embarrassed. <laughs> you know? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It wasn't even that many times. I could count it on like one hand, but uh, you know, it's just it's rough. Uh family sensitive. It's delicate. It is. You man. know? But that's also supposed to be the strongest relationships you have, right? It's a it's a weird it's a weird, like, I don't know, uh, Love and, love and hate love kind of thing. <laughs> like, I don't know. It's tough, you know? Um, so I can understand why people hold those grudges, but I don't know. It's 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 always better to just, I don't want to say be the bigger person, but, you know, just forgive and, I don't know, like, if you want to, look, on, being honest, if you, if you want to, like, show up whoever you're mad at, do something nice for them, you know? I don't know if you... <laughs> I don't know if you've ever like had a job and there's a customer treating you like really bad. If you worked in customer service, if you ever just been like unusually happy and kind to them in return, they'll turn they around. look so weird. They're like, they're like shot. Yeah, they'll <laughs> turn around. It's not what they expect. And it's the funniest thing ever. 
Um, yeah, they, they do turn around. Yeah. And I think you have a good point there. The The one thing that I do want to mention is I, re I read a book uh, about emotional health. I forget the name now, but basically what it mentions is the, the fact that we all come from families that are imperfect they're imperfect so mm -hmm. like your parents and your mom your dad it's trying their best to be, to be the best dad and mom that they could ever be mm -hmm. and you need to be grateful for that because they're literally trying their best it's mm -hmm. not like as a dad now i can say that like the, there's a bible where it says if your father and your mother knows how to give good gifts imagine how much then your heavenly father will yeah. give so it's like the natural law if you want to call it or our natural sense of parenthood will you know you have that drive to look out for your kids to do the best for your kids and so on so your mom and your dad are literally trying their best but they're people. They go to certain situation. They have their ups and downs. They have emotions. They can sometimes become a uh, tire and then go off. Yep. Yeah, yeah. People were. I saying. mean, is that acceptable? I mean, yeah, of course not. I mean, like you don't deserve to, you know, <laughs> <laughs> to get it because of somebody else. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, those things are gonna happen. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it we need to be graceful. You know, it, you gotta it, you gotta put exactly. yourself in your shoes and like understand. Or just, make it right, but. or just get to know God more mm -hmm. because yes, our parents will show us love, but it should only be the appetizer of our core substance. Like our main foundation should be the love of God. Yeah. I mean, if we look at, if we look at the example of, of Jesus Christ, I mean, what he did for us, we didn't earn it in any way. He didn't. He didn't, you know, he was a perfect being. He was sinless, blameless. And then we were sinning. We'd still sin and we commit all these errors and we upset God all the time and, and all that. And he still died for us. He still right. saved yeah, us, yeah. you know? So how can I judge someone else being undeserving of my love? If yeah, Christ exactly. Loved me infinitely more. But it's hard. It's hard to say it. Yeah. It's uh, putting it to action. Yeah, yeah it is. <laughs> it, with, with, in my, uh, in my situation, my mom left me when I was very young. I was like four years old when she left. And she came back to when I was 18. And uh, the only person that really remembers everything that we endured, like to detail, is my sister. So till today, my sister carries a huge grudge against my mom. She, they don't have a relationship. Like they don't talk. My sister refuses to talk to her. And uh, and it's it's weird because whenever we talk about her, she always refers to her, refers to my mom as your mom she never says our mom she says your mom you talk to your mom uh are you inviting your mom have you seen your mom uh and it's it's so weird because not even my dad or my stepmom no neither of them understand why i can still talk to my mom and i can s still say hello and i can hug her and i can call her i can go out to eat with her and they don't understand why and I tell them, I'm like, you guys may think that I don't remember certain things about what happened to us, but I do. I'm like, the only difference is, is that I don't find in my heart any grudge or any hatred towards her just for the simple fact that God showed me how much he loves me. You know, he let me experience that love. He let me experience that grace. And I told them, you guys are not going to understand this, this type of love, this type of forgiveness until you experience what I experienced. Until you feel what I felt. Until you begin to understand how big his love is. And my standard of, of uh, loving people and forgiving people, I always put it to the standard of what God wants us to do. So I don't care how badly somebody may talk about me. I don't care what somebody may do to me. I don't care how much trash they may put on my name and how much they may step on me. My my theory and my go to statement always is: If they did this with Jesus, why won't they do this with me? If they did this with the with the God of everything, the Creator of everything, if they did this with the Savior of the world, who said they're not going to do this to me? Yet again, He loves them, and He tells me that I need to love too. So I'd rather be at peace with my God at all times, knowing that I don't carry that grudge and I don't hate nobody. And that I, I feel this, you know, I, I'm, I'm a straight line. And that um, if I won't relate to somebody, it doesn't mean because I hate him. No, 
No, it's just that you know, I I just don't see any any. I don't I don't I don't I don't see you with wrong eyes. I don't think bad about you. I don't feel the need in my heart to to desire anything negative above you, just because I know that the same way that I forgive others, the Bible says, forgive so your father can forgive you. You know, Jesus told us to to love, to forgive, and then God will forgive you. And you have to keep that. And and when I read that verse, I don't take it to a sense where God will abstain you totally from being forgiven. What I see it as, understand you need to forgive because your father forgives you. Understand mm-hmm. you need to love because your father loves. And Paul tells everybody, be imitators of me as a, I'm an imitator of Christ. And one of the things that Christ did was love with absolution, with perfectness. No one was outside of that love that love was for everybody so they my, my family they don't they don't comprehend and they probably won't comprehend that and i tell them and that's okay i pray that you guys get to experience that love and when i tell you that i experience that love i mean i i experience that love like yeah. it was, it's, it's this overwhelming feeling of unworthiness but at the end of the day he, he just says i but i still love you you failed me here you messed up here you did this you, you kept doing this. You knew you weren't supposed to do this and you still did it. But then in the end, he always ends it with, but I still love you. So I can't, I can't compare that to nothing. Let yeah. me uh, give you that Bible verse. That's yeah. <laughs> Matthew 6, 14 to 15. It says, for if you forgive other people, when they sin against you, your heavenly father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive others their sins... Your father will not forgive your sins. Yeah, it's crazy. I don't know if y'all have a kinetic telepathic connection, but Jerry pulled that verse up like right before you said it. <laughs> yeah, well, I, I figured you were gonna. Me- I, I figured you were gonna mention it at one point, um, and just so that you guys have it on reference, so that you are able to search it up and and look look for it for yourself, just to make sure you know that we're not making stuff up. We're actually quoting scripture. But um, one thing that I do want to ask you. So you were talking about this love that is good, that, you know, underserving. But does love always feel good? No. No, no, no. No, it doesn't. Sometimes. To us, no. Sometimes love hurts. What about when God says no? Yeah. Yeah. That's love. He still loves you. You don't get what you want. You don't see what you want. What about that verse that says, (laughs) to the children that God loves, he disciplines? Mm -hmm. Mm Mm-hmm. It's part of love. So, my friends, love doesn't always feel good. <laughs> and I feel like some of our teenager years, some teen years like that I went through, I kind of like retaliated against my parents, not because, um, I guess, not because I didn't feel love, but because that love was... Not the way you wanted it. Wanted it, yeah, yeah. exactly. No, it was yeah, like, it absolutely. Was, yeah. No, I know, I know people do that they have grudges against their parents or they they just don't like their parents because, you know, they didn't like how their parents treated them or, uh, you know, they not that their parents did anything wrong. It's just their parents reacted to, to something that they were doing. And, you know, like God says, sometimes you need discipline and they would take any chance to turn that discipline the wrong way, twist right. it. And so it was a grudge that was misplaced. It was mm-hmm. an unjust grudge. There was no reason for them to have that, really. I, I think that there's good discipline and there's bad discipline, yeah. too, because... There's a line. Yeah, yeah there's some people that cross that line. Yeah, and unfortunately, that's, the, yeah. that's mainly the case. When you think about discipline, like, for example, in the Spanish culture, you think about discipline, uh, you think about belt. See, yeah. Joe, right? <laughs> uh, nowadays, you know, you probably get in trouble because of that. I'm yeah. not sure. No, I have no yeah. idea. But, um, you know, you got all this, like, self-awareness and all this, you know, <sighs> sensitivity that is going on around today that I think, uh, honestly, is going to end up uh, hurting yo, us that, a lot. That type of discipline is crazy, yo. And, and, and uh, for example, my stepmom, she used to say that her mom one time grabbed her brother, whooped him, threw him on the floor. And started jumping on him. Damn. What? <laughs> yeah. He's still alive, bro. Yeah, and and then and then. Uh, okay, and, that's. And when he much. when he talks about his mother, <laughs> he one time said it when he was preaching. He was like, "My mom jumped on me when I was a kid to discipline me, and I'm so thankful that she uh. did." <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, "Hey, yo, they brainwashed him. They brainwashed I like, him." I was like, "No, no, no, no." no, no. no. I, I, I was brainwashed. I know. I know that my mom. Uh, they used to make her kneel down in rice. <laughs> 
Yeah, yeah my dad said that or too. Or corn yeah. kettles. Yeah. So there's different ways to discipline. I yeah. mean, like, <laughs> I, I don't think, so like, for example, lo, like God has this amazing uh, balance and this amazing uh, way of, mm -hmm. you know, doing things yeah. where, you know, you, when the Bible says fear God, it's not talking about like, being scared being scared mm -hmm. but more of an amazement and stuff like that so sometimes we misinterpret that but mm -hmm. when he disciplines too like for example i cannot discipline like my daughter with fear mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah i think a lot of old school parents tend to do that though which is a mistake i feel yeah. I, I I yeah because then you end up breaking a bond yeah that, the like, bond just doesn't stay there like how do i distinct love with like how am i supposed to love this person that i'm afraid of right and it's not it's not it's not like this fear like that the bible talks about god like yes. the, when the it, when the bible talks about the fear of god it's a whole different thing yeah. it's like respect think, yeah so Reverence. it's like we need to have a balance um and i just want to say this except mo mostly for the teenagers i i guess or for the high school kid that might be watching this, like your dad and your mom is trying their best, but the way you respond has a lot to do with how they react to. Mm -hmm. Like, for example, when I became, when I came to Christ, right, I started having a bunch of backlash with my parents because it was a, it was a, a Christianity, I guess, that they didn't know. Mm -hmm. because I would walk out of my house with jeans and my mom would be like, why are you going to the church with jeans? Uh, I, I know uh, that. And I had like, I had like a whole argument about, I mean, family is complicated. Yeah. Family will tear you apart, Yeah. but it can also bring good things and reap good fruits. The good fruit that I got from that situation is that I did my research and I was able to confront my own mom. Confrontation Dang. is not wrong. I was able to confront my own mom and I literally pull up the Bible, put it on the table and I said, find me a verse that tells me how to dress. Dang. Dang, Jerry. And then I Chill. pulled up. I said, the people of God will be known because of the way they love each other. That's how they would know that we are Christians. Yeah, I'm not, not going to lie, bro. The way they, yeah, they, they like to do that. Bro, that man that's so annoying when they try to say oh they're good. oh people come up to me and say oh you must be christian because i i don't dress like that you know i don't wear those clothes or i don't have earrings or <laughs> like what yeah. what does that so, have to do with it but the way you react to has a lot to do with the the, the way you're gonna get treated mm -hmm. like for example um and i mean i i don't know i mean and sometimes as a parent when we see our kids go out of hand what we do is we intensify the punishment when sometimes they probably need love and yeah. they probably need attention the attention that you're not giving them right um but family is complicated you're gonna have these complicated co uh, conversations it is not it is not good that if you have a conflict that you shut down and not talk about it and i think i've been mm -hmm. learning a little bit more about this uh lately uh mm -hmm. with with my wife talking about being open about certain situations that i think they're not big but in the back of my head they're kind of like weighing me down <laughs> so it's like having those conversations even if they seem meaningless <clears throat> just to get it out of your mind out of your chest um out of you know out into the open into the table if you want to say it it's good conversation so i would say like clarify things before you jump into conclusions especially during yeah. those thanksgiving meetings where or those gatherings where you have grudges or you know yep you know such and such said this about me yeah think about it think Boss. about it first think about it before you say Boss. something i know most people they they already have in mind what they're going to talk about when all the family comes over <laughs> think about it be like is this actually gonna benefit anybody is this actually gonna help me or am I just saying this just to stir drama or stir up conversation? Yeah. Because if you just want to make conversation, you could talk about other stuff rather than talking about other family. Here's just, a, my bad to cut you off. No, no, just, just, just think about what you're going to say before you say. And, and here's the thing, right? And you can measure this this way. In the same book that I read about emotional health, right? It says that he said, I knew I was emotionally unstable when I went to a high school reunion 
and I sat next to a, I, I, I met uh, one of my uh, old uh, classmates. And as he was talking to me, all I could think about was how I was going to respond and how I was going to make myself look better. <laughs> yeah, that's crazy. Man. Instead of actually listening and trying to discern and take in what they were saying. Uh -huh. And we often do that. Sometimes we listen to reply and not listen to understand. Yeah. Most of the time we listen so that we can have something to say. We want to one up them. Yeah. It, it, it's like we, it's like almost like a competition. Yeah. Like, oh, you said this, let me say this. Yeah. Oh, you said that, <laughs> let me say this. Yeah. So it's like, that's how you can measure too during these uh, days if you need some emotional. <laughs> Therapy. rehab <laughs> therapy i don't yeah. know uh yeah. and and rethink revalue and actually evaluate your motives when you um have those conversations with your you know close um you know family mm -hmm. and it matters you make a difference in their lives trust mm -hmm. me you do yeah. uh, as, as as small as you know as a five-year-old three-year-old you make a difference right Cause I know for a fact that my daughters, even the one year old and the two, the the four year old, they make a difference in my parents' life, and they make a difference in, in the the core circle that we have, like yeah. my in laws, my, uh, you know, uh, my sister in laws, and and all of that. They make a difference in their lives. Sometimes they bring a little joy. Sometimes they can bring a little bit of mm. frustration, but <laughs> they do. So, just be mindful, man. Like. Are you when you're having those conversations? Are you really listening, or are you listening to reply? To you know, I don't know if your cousin is telling you something, and you know he his family is not well off, and you have it better, and he's telling you that he got a new PS5, and you're like, oh, I've been had it since it came out. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I remember one time I was like, uh, I was visiting my family in PR, and I had uh, they had a PS2. Right. <laughs> and yeah, I, you know, I was in, too. I was living here. I was maybe, I don't know, man, like six, seven, eight around there. JG started flexing. Yeah. All oh I, all, bro, I kept repeating, like repeating and PS3. repeating. Yeah. I have a PS3. I have a PS3. I have, bro. And my cousin was like, yeah, you told me already. I heard you. And I kept telling him like, oh, you won't have the PS2. I got the PS3. Yeah. <laughs> and it was bothering him so much, man. I could tell. Yeah, um, but it, but it's crazy how we we're wired and we function when we're not aware of these things, and we can end up mm -hmm. uh, potentially annoying people and hurting mm -hmm. people, and losing the opportunity to actually build memories that will build other people up. Instead of instead of being annoying, <laughs> yeah. <brat. laughs> yeah. <laughs> man, I still have fun in that PS2, man. So yeah, I guess the PS3 wasn't all that. PS2 was so, still fun. I mean, I had a PS2 at one point. Anyways. <laughs> Anyways, take take this time. And it's interesting enough that even our jobs, like if you're an adult and you're out of high school, your job, most of your jobs, because there are some people that do work. I remember this one time I did have to work on Thanksgiving. But most of Dang. your jobs, either they release you early or they give you some time off. Mm -hmm. And if you're a parent, don't spend those days shopping for Black Friday deals, man. <laughs> Or working, um, some parents or like working to, some more. Like to work on holidays. Like, take a break for once and actually invest in your family. Or be like me, mm -hmm. you know, take off Thanksgiving because they give you free. And then Black Friday when they tell you want to be off, I'll be like, I'll go to work because then they'll make you stop shopping. Just go work on Black Friday. <laughs> Save. Save the gain, money. Gain money Save instead money. of spending. Save the money. Um, What about the... What about um? I was gonna say uh, what can a uh, strong family do? Because I was gonna say that a lot of times we think about immediate family, you know, blood relatives, but you know, the Bible also talks about a family, a community, you know, so mm -hmm. not just um, you know, brothers and sisters, but friends, you know, yep. can also be family. I think in some verses it even says that a friend can be closer than a brother. Than a brother, yeah, yep. right, exactly. So, what is the importance of having good people around you? Um, blood relatives and just friends like what I, I think that's really important to have a good group of people around you to support critical, you dude. to to you know to, to be in a good community you know because that's kind of what church is a community right it is the um, body of Christ yeah. the and first, I feel like that's really important the, the very first times that I had dinner like a dinner was with church folks 
friends. The very first time that I did a Christmas gathering was with church friends. The very first time that I, the very first time that I cut a turkey <laughs> on Thanksgiving <laughs> was with church friends. Not even with blood related family. It was just church friends. Your birthday. Like, in my, yes. The very first time that I actually celebrated my birthday now as a, as a grown adult. <laughs> This, no way. Bro, this dude could this not. This guy was a monk, bro. <laughs> if you haven't watched his testimony, go watch it, bro. Because that joint, like, you will, he'll you say will be basketball. In, you, will, <laughs> you will be in shock at what he yeah, could not do. It, it, yeah, it's it like like for real. You would think that you do that with your family. No, no. The, my first times was with friends, but it's because the people that were there are as close as as a family should be, and I see them as family. I honestly do. And my church, I see my church. I see our church as family. Mm -hmm. I see us as the family of Christ. And I see the unity. I see the type of um, the, the, the ones that actually go because we want to be part of the body of Christ, how we're meant to be. We want to serve. We want to follow Christ. We all have the same mindset that that's, that's what I see within our church. So I see them as a family, but um, it's, it's uh it's necessary to have that even with your blood related people. If you're not, if, if you don't experience that with actual blood related family, I, I think you should pursue that. And if, and if that's not possible with your current family, like if you're a teen or you're, or you're above 18 year old, years old, and you don't see that with your own family, strive to be that new generation. That's going to break that and be that family that you always wanted. For example, I'm, I'm about to get married. And I strive to have a relationship with, uh, with my sister and, and, you know, and I want my kids to have a relationship with her kids. And, um, same thing with all my other cousins. I don't want to be so isolated and separated as I was for many years. I want them to integrate. I want them to share memories, make memories. I want to break that curse because sadly religion tends to break families. It tends to break relationships and bonds, mm -hmm. but Real faith creates real love. It creates a real connection, a real bond. Um, the same way that God said, just believe in me and trust me. The more you believe in, the more you trust God, the stronger your faith becomes. And the more you begin to fall in love with him, because you start to see that it's actually worth it to believe and trust him. Uh, but, it's so important. We, I think we've said this almost probably every episode. It's so important for you to be a part of a community. It's really important. Not just because they'll help you in your, in your hard situations or your struggles, but even in moments like this, when your real family is probably not there, your community will be there. Your, mm -hmm. your, your friends from church, your, your church folks will be there. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, I have found it a lot easier to talk to church folks and get close to church folks and have a relationship with church folks and some of some of my my, my blood related family it's just, it's just I don't know <laughs> I don't know why but no, wow. it's it's a little bit easier I feel you on that I mean I think that's an important question you know how critical it is to have uh you know that core family or that family of faith um I I have my two cents about that because I've lived through two two sides of that if you want to call it mm -hmm. i live the side where i have been around christians that are just doing their job because they see it as a job it was a fictional <laughs> relationship like it was like i'm a christian so i'm gonna act nice to you and i'm gonna smile to you and i'm gonna say hi to you then you meet them outside of church and you're like wait why why are you acting so different <laughs> so yeah. i i kind of got to see both of the i guess side of the coins um especially when i was younger there's a situation in my family that happened that kind of crippled our family and left me uh in a tight situation left my mom and, and you know my my dad in a tight situation um and i saw how the church responded to us going to church but when they found out about the situation i think all they did was give us a bag of like canned food and then nobody literally nobody bothered to ask like me 
how I was doing or anything. Mm-hmm. I know they did to my mom, but it's like, you know, you can tell when you are surrounded by Christians that are not, this is going to be harsh, that are not focused on themselves so much. That's the nice way to put it. I was going to say something <laughs> else. <laughs> where they're not consumed by their self-image, where, you know, you know, they want to everything revolves around them and everything is about them and everything is about their ministry Mm -hmm. and forget you you either ride with me or you get out of the way so i got the feeling of both i got to a church where it's like yeah you're nice people but you're not genuine people you're nice because you're reading that you have to be nice you're you're not nice because it's it's flowing and growing out of your hearts and i think that has a lot to do with the fruit of the holy spirit when we look at the fruit of the holy spirit these things are going to come naturally but when we try to force this in our lives we're going to have imbalances or off balances all around the place you're going to try to be nice but then your patience is going to run short why because you're doing it with your own efforts right you're not letting the spirit develop the fruit so I got to experience both. I mean, now that I'm at church, I could say that, yeah, I mean, I, I've, I have a core circle and I have friends that I know that can uplift me and that can uh, I can count on, mm-hmm. um, especially like some of the uh, pastors and ministers of, of the church where I have literally been open and said, hey, man, I screwed up. I'm doing this or I'm doing that <laughs> and I need help. Or I can openly say, I'm feeling this way or this way towards this person. Help me, you know, overcome this or help me look at it in a different perspective. Hey, we are humans, you know, we, we will go through situations and it's not a sin to feel anger or to feel frustration. It's a sin to act upon it. Mm-hmm. So I think that, that, that there is a, a core value to having a family that is, you know, a faith family that is that is within the church. Many Bible verses. Mm-hmm. Good yeah. friends sharpen. Uh, what is that verse? Uh, iron sharpens iron, iron. Yeah, as iron sharpens iron. Uh, friend what sharpens is, a friend or something like that. Yeah. yeah, something like that. It goes along. We we, we can search it up, but Man, we, or search it up yeah, on they Google. Know. I think uh, everybody's heard just Google verse. it. Yeah. The Bible verse about good friends <laughs> and uh, sharpening iron. Mm-hmm. But anyways, um, the other verse, two, two are better than one, because if one falls, then the other one is going to be there to take them up, up or yeah. uplift them. Uh, there, there's many other things, too. And the fact that our faith, you know, revolves in loving others. Yeah, it does. So it's a that's central message. The second commandment. Yeah. So it's yeah, like, no, love no. God with all your heart I, and then love your neighbor yeah, i think that is so <laughs> to me that's like so like crazy like incredible the fact he said was they asked him what's the greatest commandment he said the first is to love god over all else right yeah and he said the second is like it like it yeah that's he said, true the second is like it you know love your brothers and sisters yeah and all that and, and, and i was I, like yeah that's crazy yeah he said and in all and of this the law is completed yeah and it's, it's crazy like, because if you look at the uh is it the and it says do unto them what you would do unto you yeah there's a i want is it in matthew there's a passage where he's where 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 uh i think it's jesus he's talking about um you know uh when when you enter heaven you know um you will ask uh, i would tell you uh i forgot what exactly he says but basically he's like you know what you did for these you did for me what you oh. when you fed me and when you helped me yeah yeah it's the verse when he says that when when he comes and he's gonna judge them and uh-huh. he said depart from me i did not know you yeah. because uh you know I when hungry, i was hungry you didn't, you didn't feed, feed me, me. Yeah. And been, when Lord, i was in Lord, prison how? you didn't visit me yeah how would we have fed you how would we have done you and then you know he's saying like yeah well your brothers and sisters what you didn't do for them you didn't do for me and what you did do for them you did it for me. Yeah. I think it's crazy how, how much God wants us to love each other. Yeah. And to be a community and to be brothers, you know. Our yeah. Brothers, not brothers and sisters. It's a, there's a biblical it, significance to and, that. And I think that's a revelation because you literally need to treat people like property of Christ. Because they are. Mm-hmm. They are. We're adopted into the family. Yeah. 
we're adopted as children of God, all of us, as sons of God. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Right? So we, we, you know, we're all, like you're saying, property to God. We all belong to him and we all have to love each other yeah. as if we all belong to him. Right. Yeah, it is you hard. Know? Love is hard. I mean, like, it's hard. Like Kevin said, love hurts. Love love can be uncomfortable sometimes. Uh, there is like this, this thing. I don't know if it's still a thing, but back then it was like, uh, I'm going to keep it real. I'm going to keep it 100. And that <laughs> meant I'm not going to fake. I'm not yeah. going to be fake. And there is a difference between faking and there's a difference between pushing yourself to become better. Like, for example, I have placed myself in situations where I literally took out people that I didn't <laughs> didn't like uh, to eat just to get to know them better. <laughs> uh, or like I literally uh, spend time with them just so that I can get to know them better so that I can learn a little bit more about them before I jump into conclusions. Um, so yeah man this is it's a that's a great point that you brought in that the fact that um that jesus mentioned that and and even there's another verse too that mentions that that everything that you do will be counting even a cup of water that Mm -hmm. you give will be rewarded (laughs) yeah a cup of water it's like when people say if you save one person your whole life it was worth it yeah just one person and you're, we're probably capable of much more, but just that one person. Yeah. You made your life worth it. You know, I mean. Yeah. I, I know it's important. But I mean, family can do, like you were saying, you know, they, they're they there to lift you up. They're there to support you. You know, they're, 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 they'll they have your back. Um, They're there for consolation, for wisdom, for guidance, for teaching, you know, for di- discipleship. Family, a community is there to, you know, discipline, you know. Yeah. There's all sorts of important uses and functions of a family, of a of a biblical community that uh, all operates within the guidelines that Christ has given us. Um, so it's very important how we do that. And, you know, it can be hard. It can be a lengthy process, finding a good family, you know. Um, just because you you have a good church doesn't mean everybody in the church is going to be good. Cool beans, good in your, yeah, you know. There's but, people that don't like me. Yeah. There's people that will like you. But I think, I mean, God made us that way I so that we so. could be, you know, he, just because he knows we're hard-headed. You, like, man, you, you complain too much. Just deal with them because yeah, you're the exactly. same way. I have to deal with you. You yeah. know, I feel like to a certain or point. Or you ask for patience. We, we here you go. Yeah. You know, <laughs> to a certain point, like we can't complain because I bet we're like that to other people sometimes. Bro. Right? Sometimes, um, sometimes I think there's a saying that sometimes when you see things that bother you or somebody is because they're issues that you have yourself. Mm-hmm. Um, hey. And they remind you of you. But Self-analyze. <laughs> self-analyze during these times take the time to really spend invest in your family be grateful for if you have a church great if you don't have a church pray to god to mm-hmm. lead you to the right church um there's nothing wrong with that there's nothing wrong with you know uh visiting churches to see if you're you know want to take uh the i guess the the next step the next step to stay there yeah um there's people that do that all that all the time now there there is a unhealthy trend where you <laughs> would jump from church to church to church to church to church for your whole life that is unhealthy be careful that is yeah. extremely and I think unhealthy that's, that's related to what you were saying like a bad reaction to a good discipline you know yeah that some people, some can't people just can't take it yeah some, they just some can't, can't take it. it they can't take authority they can't take discipline and sometimes like for example it comes off wrong especially like if you have like daddy issues i would say like discipline and like <laughs> receiving an order can be uh received very wrong mm-hmm. yeah hey don't blast us in the comments it's we ain't coming at nobody yeah, but, yeah you know no, it's no. true we all man. have it's our just, flaws yeah we all have our yeah. flaws it's just it's it's you know like for example uh, i think i mentioned this before um some of some of the things that i have to work in is uh sarcasm sometimes like i would uh express my hurt and my uh opinion with sarcasm and to a certain point um i noticed not too long ago that i uh i kind of did it uh to my wife like i like <laughs> cheesed at her when i did something uh you know that kind of ticked her off but um yeah sarcasm was one of my things but analyze there's nothing wrong with reviewing your lives with actions and motives and why you're having the conversations that you're having there's nothing wrong with saying hey what can i improve what can i do to become a better person that could potentially be a blessing to somebody else and to the people who are around me 
um, I came to a conclusion where, you know, I know for a fact that I come from a broken family because my family was not perfect at all. I have so many stories to tell you uh, of <laughs> messed up things, uh, you know, when I went through and I'm pretty sure you did too. I'm not the only one. Uh, we do not come from perfect families, mm -hmm. but there is that hope. And that verse that says that all things will work out for good for those who love the Lord. So there's lessons to be learned from all of this. Mm -hmm. And I think that there's going to be a point in your life where all of this negative experiences, positive experiences, experiences in your life. When you come to Christ and you start walking by faith. You're going to start seeing all of that turn around and work for the best. For example, I know for a fact that with me purchasing a house here, I have overcome a generational curse. Amen, amen. So, because we never live in here, we never had a house. Uh huh. Never. Always I rented, remember. always a basement uh, apartment. So, when I took that leap of faith, And when I tell you that my life turned around 360 when I accepted Christ and, and when I came back to Christ, to be honest, because I had already accepted it. And then I, I went and did some shenanigans <laughs> and then I, and I had the encounter in my room. But um, when I started living for Christ and living, you know, a life that is not easy, I'm not going to lie to you. This is one of the most challenging things that I ever embarked in. Mm -hmm to live for Christ. Uh, I had to overcome so many uh, roots of religious background that I had in, implanted in my mind, but it was not easy, but it's the best thing that ever happened to me because I became self-aware of a lot of things. Right. And I became aware of God's new culture, which I needed to adopt and leave my old culture in order for me to become, you know, Mm -hmm. part of his family yeah. mm -hmm. so part of the transition that happens when you accept christ number one is you get forgiven from all your sins number two like the holy spirit it you know makes you part of god's family right Body so of christ you become part of this family, this new family, the body of christ just as your family had their own culture god has his own culture yep And the culture of God doesn't necessarily, uh, we don't necessarily know it from the bat. It's something that we're constantly learning. Right. Mm -hmm. So I had to often leave my culture aside. And I think that this is some of the problem that some people have. They don't leave their culture aside. They try to bring their culture into God instead of leaving their culture and adopting God's culture in order for them to become a better person. You see that in Hispanic. Oh, my church did it this way, so I'm going to do it this way. And it's not going to change because this is the way we did it in my country. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's true, man. So. We need to shed off. There is also a family that you're adopted into mm -hmm. that has its own culture. Where it says, if, you're, if somebody slaps you in the face, turn, turn your, your other cheek. cheek. Yeah. Uh -huh. And it's not talking about slaps. It's talking about uh, it, it, it. It's talking about offenses. Like if somebody offends you with their mouth, um, that that's what it meant. And it didn't mean a physical slap. Okay, um, so don't don't come at me trying to slap me because I will smack back, but not nothing. Yeah. <laughs> I fight back. I fight don't back. Try me. Try Jesus. <laughs> yeah. Try Jesus. Yeah. Anyways, um, so there is a new culture that we need to adopt, and that's the culture of God. Mm -hmm. and those things are hard to digest yeah they is. don't come they don't come yeah because you gotta easy. shut off your old habits you gotta let go of your old culture your old way of thinking yeah you know things that probably have been cemented for years, for years. and years you know exactly yeah. especially if you're like a person that maybe immigrated somewhere else and you lived yeah. your whole life in a in a, your home country and then all everything's new it's like that you know coming to christ for the first time or mm -hmm. maybe learning the correct you know christianity right not some sort of dogma but like the real you know the real biblical christianity you know? it's, it's like yeah. a shock you know you're like you have to adjust and 
it takes time. But um, I don't know, man. Take these holidays, guys, to self-analyze. Self-analyze. Yes. Shut Be off. Be grateful. I, I, I like to say this. I like to say dare to love. Like dare to love because it's hard. Loving is hard. It is. Loving is so much more than we think it is. Loving, you don't get recognition for it. You don't, no. Jesus didn't get it when he was alive, right? He got it. You know, he's probably the most famous man, as he should be. But in his time, what they thought was his biggest weakness was his biggest strength, and nobody realized it. Right. The way he loved. No. So I dare you to love, you know? Yeah. I dare you to love those family members that you just can't stand. Love them yeah. in your own way, but Smile. love them. You know? Love them. Hug them. <laughs> Give them a hug, good hug. Sometimes I've done that. I, I just hug people. I'm like, God, please help me. And I just throw a prayer. <laughs> please help me to love this person. Please, please, you know, help me see them how you see them. I think that's something that has, mm-hmm. has helped me out. Yeah. Help me see them how you Through your eyes. see them. Yeah. Help me love. They, that's a beautiful prayer, actually. That, that is a beautiful prayer. Help me love yeah. my neighbor. Help Let me, me love this person. Let me see the best of them. The yeah, so that, that that is so good, man. Yeah, take this time to love people. I dare you to, to love. love. And you'll see the fruits. Uh, I saw that in my life uh, plenty of times where I decided to love people. And they came around, they turned around, mm-hmm. and I got a positive, uh, I guess, result. And some I haven't. But at the end of the day, I know that I did the right thing. Right. And I don't hold yeah. that, you know, thought, what if I would have acted different or what I should have done this, I should have done that. No, I did what I had to do. The person didn't react. That's on them. So I cannot feed fire with fire because it's going to... Just going to grow. Grow, right. So uh-huh. take the time to really invest in the people that you love. Yeah. Be thankful. Be grateful. Have joy. Eat. Some apple pie, some I don't know what you'd be eating on on uh, on Thanksgiving. <laughs> American, you eat that cranberry yeah, sauce. Cranberry sauce. Uh, <laughs> I don't know about you, but I like for, some. For me, uh, we we got we got a mix of everything. Pupusas. We got like pupusas. We got we got the the pan con pollo. You know what I mean? <laughs> we stuff that joint so Man, bad that you can't even eat it, bro. Yeah, you just... It's like you got to break it apart in order to mm-hmm. build now, it up together. Now, now, if if you got some family member that likes to put the bone in the chicken in those things. You can treat them bad. It's okay. No. <laughs> it's like, no. <laughs> yeah, no I hate lie. when they do that, bro. Because then you got to take it all yeah, apart. And, and, and you got you got a bone in there. Yeah. Uh, it's for the flavor, or like bro. like in the tamales. It's know? for the flavor, no, bro. No, bro. This man, because what you don't know about Joey is that he can entirely demolish a whole extra large pizza by himself. <laughs> this man doesn't chew. I'm not the same. I'm not this same. man doesn't chew. He just... I, I used to I used to do that. Takes yeah. a bite and swallow. Yeah, for real. Uh, yeah. But anyways, take the time to um, be grateful. Yeah. Uh, meditate on the people that God has given you. How can you be a blessing to them? Mm-hmm. Um, and yeah. take the time to share too. There's nothing wrong to you know approach your mom or your dad and say, "Hey, I'm thankful for your life." Yeah. You 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 won't you you try it. You'll be surprised of the result that you're going to get. Yeah. You're probably going to bring a, a huge smile on your face. Right. Yeah. But we're going to call it a night or a day or whenever you're watching Evening. this. I don't know. Yep. Yeah. Thank you know, man. for tuning in. Thank you, guys. Take these holidays off, man. Take it easy. Yep. These are meant. These are days meant to, to you know, relax. Let the peace of the Lord consume you, you know, and just uh, enjoy. Try to enjoy, you know. Don't let the, you know, family's drama. You know, there's drama in family, but don't let it get to you, man. Catch right. that PS5 on sale sign. <laughs> <laughs> hey, uh, Catch Spider-Man that bundle. <laughs> Spider-Man 2. Actually, they don't go on sale. They probably got bundles. Yeah, they yeah. probably do. The Spider-Man bundles. But I'm anyways, not going to lie. Them GameStop sales be not. They, they be whack. Yeah, they be anyways, whack. Um, God bless you guys. Stay strong. I don't know if you have anything to say, Kevin. From Backyard Conversations, we like to wish you guys happy holidays. Enjoy. Yep. Yes. Take care. Hit the follow button. Hit that share. Patreon? Maybe. Hey man, still uh, no patrons, but hey, yeah. Still. If if you uh, if you want to donate and invest in this ministry and so in our ministry, uh, we will be extremely grateful for it. Mm-hmm. Um, yes, this takes I mean, time. All of this, everything that you know we are using has cost us yeah. one way or another. Mm-hmm. Um, so you know, yeah. Right now, it's if like you twelve midnight. Are generous, which you are, you know. Feel free to follow the link and invest. Um, invest in what God is doing in us and through us because we 
don't only do this we we just came from a uh, actually a, a youth service mm-hmm. and we are actively serving in the church of god and i think that uh our lives are a testimony of serving and the the you know the work that we do for the lord yeah. but nonetheless it's it's a pleasure it's a joy for us god bless you guys take care and i'll catch you and we'll catch you in the next episode stay mm-hmm. tuned because we got some pretty sauce <laughs> tea things coming up <laughs> that are gonna be a blessing to your lives yeah peace Amen. see y'all